Hello everybody, Sergey Baklukov, you're watching Baklukov Live and this video is some kind of continue of the recent video from the legendary The House of the Book bookstore in St. Petersburg, Russia. There I told you that I will recommend you the Russian literature books uh, you was asking me about to recommend, okay? So here are top Russian classic literature books that I essentially selected for you. They are from my library. In my library there's almost all Russian classic literature, but these are the best ones. My top, top 10 or even more, from one side it's uh, kind of subjective, from another side you do not consider this as the traditional top because um, here we can say in Russian literature and especially in Russian classic literature that let's say Dostoevsky is better than Pushkin and Pushkin is better than Tolstoy. No way. So consider this as the just uh, the sets of top Russian books. Uh, Russian, uh, the books of Russian classical literature. And I'm going to begin with the uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky, novel Crime and Punishment, written in 1866. It's one of the most significant works in the history of world literature, not only Russian literature. This is a deep philosophical novel. It's an, a subtle psychological drama and an exciting detective story and a majestic picture of a gloomy city in the depth of which the characters sin and then seek forgiveness sacrifice themselves and renounce themselves for the sake of their neighbors and uh, find peace in humility, repentance and uh, faith. The main character of the novel Rodion Raskolnikov, the student, decides to kill in order to prove to himself and the world that he is not a trembling creature but has the right право имеющий. The main subject of the uh, Dostoevsky's research is the process of turning a respectable, intelligent and kind young man into a murderer, as well as how Raskolnikov, who has committed a crime, can atone for his guilt. The scene of the murder, part 1, chapter 7. He had not a minute to lose. He pulled the axe quite out, swung it with both arms, scarcely conscious of himself, and almost without effort, almost mechanically, brought the blonde side down on her head. He seemed not to use his own strength in this, but as soon as he had once brought the axe down, his strength returned to him. Once we're talking about Dostoevsky, also important uh, to say about the Karamazov brothers, the last, the last novel, the pinnacle of Dostoevsky work, in a sense, uh, the main work of Dostoevsky life and together with crime and punishments, these are uh, one of the greatest works in the history of Russian literature. The Karamazov brothers, a mystery connected with death and theft, a love story full of intensity and passions, a uh, family drama unfolding before the uh, reader's eyes, uh, a complex psychological twists and turns, many other action-packed lines woven into the main canvas. All this fits into the novel The Karamazov Brothers, the main problematic of which is the question about God and the immortality of the soul, and in the center of the story, as always with Dostoevsky, there is a man tormented by doubts, torn apart by passions, 
longing for love, power, money, uh, rushing from good to evil and uh, from evil to good, looking for his own path, his faith, his gods. The novel forms the basis of dozens of uh, films, film adaptations, as in Russia, as all over the globe. I hope you at least watched the uh, movie. Okay, the next book and my top that's War and Peace of Leo Tolstoy, an epic novel by Leo Tolstoy, one of the largest works of Russian and world literature describing the life of Russian society in the era of Napoleonic Wars, that's the beginning of 19th century. The War and Peace is a large-scale picture of the life of Russia, taken in all its social strata, from peasants to Emperor Alexander I. This is both a detailed description of the course of hostilities and an understanding of human behavior in war, but the main thing is a deep philosophical understanding and study of life as such, and everyday life, and the family, and peacetime, and in war. That's why War and Peace can be read and reread all your life. This novel will never lose its relevance, and I just purchased the new copy today. Another Leo Tolstoy novel I absolutely can't not to mention in today's top. It's Anna Karenina, one of the most famous novels of Leo Tolstoy, which begins with phrase that became an aphorism. Happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. This is a book about eternal values, about love, faith, family, human dignity. Anna Karenina is rightfully called the most famous and popular love novel in the world. The huge developments of the human soul, as Dostoevsky spoke of the book, is probably what captivates us most in this book. The story of all-consuming passion. The story of a married woman who fell in love with a handsome officer and abandoned her husband in uh, defiance of everything. The opinion of the society around generally accepted morality, her conscience. Anna Karenina was filmed 30 times. The music for the Anna Karenina ballet was composed by Pyotr Tchaikovsky and Radion Shedrin. The main character of Anna Karenina in the movie was played in different times by Greta Garbo and Vivian Lee, Alec Tarasova and uh, Tatiana Samoylova, uh, Sophie Marceau and Kira Knightley. Uh, this, this book, of course, uh, is much more than just a love story. It is a whole science of family, society and life. The next big writer in our list today is uh, Nikolai Gogol. The poem Dead Souls, it was translated into many other languages, yet during the lifetime of the writer. It was an uh, incredible, incredible success. No one before Gogol and after him was able so vividly and truthfully reflect the most important problems for Russia. Uh, 160 years have passed and uh, uh, the poem sounds like it was uh, just written. The uh, amazing images created by the great visionary Gogol, you know, such a, you know, like the idol dreamer Manilov, the narcissistic braggarts Nozdrev, the limited wooden-headed Korobochka, the ignorant rude Sabakevich, 
the uh, pathologically greedy cheapskate Plushkin and the great adventurer Chichikov. Yeah, these images have steps over their time and became a household names. Absolutely. Would be wrong yet not to say about uh, Revisor if we're talking about Google. Google's Revisor, what means the government inspector. This immortal comedy is one of the uh, pinnacles of his work. Since uh, first staged in 1836, the play has been one of uh, on the stage uh, of the theaters all over the world and uh, also like serves the basis for numerous adaptations and the names of its characters have become household names too. Gogol as the genius writer gave his contemporaries the opportunity to look at themselves from the outside forcing them to laugh at usual things. He brought to the stage almost all the negative characters and showed all the social vices inherent in people no matter what century they are living in. And now Pushkin, Alexander Pushkin. Of course, you can't talk about the most significant Russian literature without Alexander, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. His novel in verse uh, Evgeny Onegin, or should I say Eugen Onegin, is the most famous and most significant works. Uh, it's uh, the pinnacle of Russian poetry and uh, the subject of numerous studies. Pushkin began writing uh, the novel in 1823 and finished only in 1831 when Onegin's letter to Tatiana was written, so it has taken eight years. Evgeny Onegin, the uh, jaded and bored dandy, refused a provincial girl in love with him and humiliated her. A few years later, she became the wife of the prince, a uh, secular lady. Then, already Onegin fall, fell in love with her, but she uh, remained faithful to her husband, not like uh, Anna Karenina. A big love story, dramatic plot twists, subtle psychologism of the characters, a detailed description of the life and customs of that era. It is no cons coincidence that the prominent literary critic Belinsky called the novel an encyclopedia of Russian life. In this work, as in a mirror, a Russian life was reflected. Evgeny Onegin will never lose its relevance. And even after two centuries, we are amazed at the accuracy and fidelity of the minds of cold observations and hearts of said remarks of the great Russian poet Alexander Pushkin. <laughs> The next book is The War from Wits by Alexander Grybayedov, a Russian writer and diplomat, one of the uh, river canals, like canals, yeah, canals, in the center of St. Petersburg, here named after him. The comedy War from Wits uh, brought literally fame to Grybayedov. This play, deep in content depicts the life and customs of an aristocratic society in the first half of the 19th century. Belongs to the number of works of Russian literature that do not lose uh, the relevance at all times. The play found a long and interesting life on the theater stages. Wu from Wit is probably the most quoted Russian books ever. Nearly a dozen phrases 
from the play are still widely used by Russians today in conversations and many don't realize that the roots of these aphorisms, phrases are in the 19th century comedy. Here are some of the most popular ones. And who are the judges? A kto, meaning that before judging anyone, a man should take a look at himself. No one happy minds the clocks. Счастливые часов не наблюдают. The phrase about how people are getting lost track of time when happy. My carriage, bring my carriage rounds. Карету мне, карету. The main character, Chatsky, was extremely mad at everyone and finally he finds his beloved Sophia with a new boyfriend. He is fed up with people lying and deceiving each other and he decides to flee as soon as possible. So if you want to show that you are entirely fed up with a situation and want to get away from from it all, you can say, my carriage, bring my carriage rounds. Or, as I said in Russian, sounds like karetu mnie, karetu. And uh, many, many more phrases came from war, from it. The next uh, book today, uh, in today's top collection of Russian literature is Atsi i Deti, Fathers and Sons, uh, the famous novel by Russian writer Ivan, or should I say Ivan Turgenev, which has become almost the most significant work in the history of the relationship between generations. The disputes of the protagonist Yevgeny Bazarov, who calls himself a nihilist uh, and denies common ideas about life, art, morality, human nature, and uh, his antagonist, Pavel Kersanov, an aristocrat to the marrow of his bones, constitutes the main problematic of the novel. But the plot's outline is built more on the internal conflicts of Bazarov uh, himself. He is the one he is the one who uh, had just denied everything and all, did not believe in love, laughed at his friends capable of tender feelings, suddenly falls patiently and falling in love. And everything suddenly turns upside down. Bazarov is unable to cope with love. It turns out to be stronger than the strongest convictions that he had. The next book is from another <clears throat> Ivan, Ivan Goncharov. It's called Oblomov, a brilliant novel about Ilya Oblomov, a very good man, but who takes on one thing and another, but never completing anything until the end. And after all, he is disappointed in everything. He personifies mental apathy, laziness and passivity, which encompassing and fettering all the best human rational movements and feelings. This phenomenon, which receives the name of Oblomovism from the writer, stepped from the pages of the novel far beyond the framework of its time. Oblomov, it's a story of a failed career, unfulfilled love, missed opportunities, but at the same time, oddly enough, the life story of a completely happy person, in his opinion. Oblomov uh, is uh, kind of complicated, he maybe would love to have more, but the problem is he must work more work hard on it. He understands it and even uh, used to try sometimes here and there, but always give up pretty soon because it is easier to do nothing and uh, 
to have a so-so life. But after all, he is finding a uh, compromise, happy compromise of, yes, like having a so-so life, but do not do much for that. Oblomov turned to be another household name from Russian literature. Oblomov. Oblomovism. Okay, so uh, it's already more than a uh, half of books we consider it. Let's continue. Let's continue. And here now I have Anton Chekhov, Three Sisters, and the Cherry Garden, or should I say Cherry Orchards. Uh, so, uh, Three Sisters. If talk about three sisters, then here in the center of attention, uh, three sisters, Olga, Masha, and Irina. Three sisters are living in a uh, provincial town with, they are with different characters and habits, but they are all equally brought up and educated. Their life is an expectation of a change. A single dream to Moscow, to go to Moscow, в Москву, в Москву, but nothing changes. The sisters remain in the provincial town. In a place of a uh, dream comes regrets about the lost youth, the ability to dream and hope, and the understanding that nothing will change. Some critics called the play Three Sisters the apogee of Chekhov's pessimism. Um, another one of uh, the most famous works of Anton Chekhov is the play The Cherry Garden or Cherry Orchards. This work summed up the writer's thoughts on the uh, fate of the Russians and became the last work on the creative path of Chekhov, the great master of drama. The Cherry Orchards on the estate of the Ranevsky family was a place for walking and relaxing. It seemed to become a member of the family for the uh, landowner Lyubov Andreevna Ranevska. But the family went bankrupt and the estate will be sold for debt. The new owner doesn't need a garden, he needs the land for him filled with unnecessary cherry trees. And now, mourning such native flowering cherries, Ranevska, however, does nothing to save what is dear to her with which the best memories of your life are connected. In fact, in this last play for Chekhov, originally conceived by him as a comedy, he uh, displays the image of Russia itself at the uh, turn of the times, in the change of eras, here, let me explain that it was written in 1904, only one year before the revolution of 1905, which has became a prologue for the great October revolution of 1917. Now, moving forwards, and here is the drama um, Lady Macbeth of... No, it's... Um, Ostrovsky, Alexander Ostrovsky, and uh, the girl without a dowry. In the society where the wealth prevails over true feelings, she was unhappy. Not a single person dared to look into the girl's soul and uh, show the real interest. A woman has become just a thing. She has no choice and no way to get a respectful attitude. In 1984, the great Russian movie director Eldar Rezanov filmed an amazing movie 
by the uh, um, lady without a dowry drama called A Cruel Romance with such an actors as Larissa Guzieva, Nikita Mikhalkov, Andrei Mikhkov, and Alisa Friendlich. Ostrovsky, yep. Okay, moving to the next book, Mikhail Bulgakov, Master and Margarita. It's a cult mystery novel, a brilliant masterpiece of Russian literature. Fantastic, multi-plots with a complex structure, realistic and philosophical and mystical for all sorts of subtexts, analogies and allegories literally disassembled into quotes and leaving behind many questions. Unclean forces led by the devil Volans himself appear in Moscow one spring day to restore order. This is how the full of adventure and irony begins a story where love and loyalty win in the end. And um, again, if talk about Bulgakov, we also have to say about the story called Hearts of a Dog, one of the most famous and memorable works in uh, the creativity of Mikhail Bulgakov with in Amidable sarcasm and humor, Bulgakov describes Professor Preobrazhensky's unprecedented risky experiments in turning a dog into a man, creating a magnificent parody of the paradoxical situation of Soviet Russia in the 1930s. The cruel experience of breeding a new breed of people shows that it is impossible to experiment with nature and uh, change God's providence to pleasure, to please, to please political uh, goals with impunity. The offspring of such experiments are capable of destroying their creators. Um, so, three writers left here, and I continue my review. My top continues Nikolai Leskov and his Lady Macbeth of the Mtsensk district. Also known as Katharina Ismailova, the story written in 1864, which is showing how strong but also cruel character of a Russian woman can be who is ready to go to any crimes for the sake of her crazy love. Love can work wonders with person. But in this story of Nikolai Leskov, the love lowers Lady Macbeth to the lowest vices. In 1932, one of the greatest Russian composers ever, Dmitry Shostakovich composed an opera based on Lady Macbeth of the Mtsensk district, which is also like just called like that. It is now still goes on a regular uh, basis at Mariinsky Theater here in St. Petersburg. The Twelve Chairs, it's uh, the first novel by the writers Ilya Ilf and Evgeny Petrov, they are worked together, which has become perhaps the finest and uh, most witty work in Russian literature. This novel, written almost a century ago, is still well known. Quotes from the novel are known even to those who never read a single page of the text. The story of how Astap Bender and his partner Kisa Vrabyaninov are trying to find diamonds hidden in one of uh, the 12 chairs of a furniture set. It has become a truly folk classic. It was first uh, published in uh, 
1928, and uh, today it is called among the most popular works of Russian literature of the uh, uh, 20th, 20th century. The story of two swindlers who set off in search of Madame Pitohova's diamonds is still popular with readers to this day. The name of Asta Bender, the great strategist, became a household name too. And uh, the novel itself was sold in quotes and went through hundreds of successful reprints. And uh, I'm gonna finish today this talk with Alexander Beliaev, the Russian science fiction writer, reporter, lawyer, one of the founders of the Soviet science fiction literature for his significant contribution to Russian sci-fi and visionary ideas, Beliaev is called the Russian Jules Verne. In his novels, uh, Beliaev anticipated the emergence of many inventions, television, human space flights, orbital stations, unmanned serial vehicle, and uh, predicted many achievements in the field of biology and medicine. Here, his novel called Professor Doyle's Head, one of the best and most fascinating and vivid works of the early periods of Russian science fiction. Can the human head exist separately from the body? Can this head still think, talk, feel? Is it possible to save a person's life by grafting his head to someone else's healthy body? And most importantly, what can humanity expect if the amazing discovery made by Professor Doyle falls into criminal hands? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now this was all my top, turned to be more than top 10, but that is good, better more than less right? Please, in the comments, write down which books you already used to read, maybe watched something as the movie, or which ones you've got interested to read based on my short annotations. My name is Sergey Baklikov. This is Baklikov Live. Have a great time, read books, and see you.